let's put a let's put a rose on a girl's face and it's art you know <laughs> hey everyone if you're new to my channel welcome and if you're not new you may be wondering where my iPad is and um, I had to get rid of it because today I'm going to be showing you guys my old traditional artwork and a lot of these pieces are pretty big so I had to clear my table in order to show it to you in the best way possible so let's get right into it so before I get into exactly what I drew, um, I want to show you what got me inspired, and those were my manga books. Now, as a kid, I was super into manga because I saw it as a really cool artistic style. I didn't really understand it as a genre for visual entertainment like it is now, um, but I just saw it as like, oh, people make these mangas and they write in them and there's really great artwork. And so I was interested in that and I wanted to kind of copy it. It wasn't until later I understood that, oh, Dragon Ball Z and um, Yu-Gi-Oh, those are like animes and there's a whole genre of animes out there that I can watch. So yeah, so this is how I started. Um, these are like super, super basic books. This one in particular was my first one. This was published in 2003, and I think I got it in 2006. So yeah, I would just follow these super basic steps and uh, <laughs> copy these drawings. Um, I'm trying to find, I would actually draw inside of the book. Like you can see me there practicing my anime eyes. Super interested in that. Um, and you can see how dirty the book is because it's just so old. I hope it doesn't mess up my table. But yeah, I'm, I would want to show it to you closer, but it's hard to see with the glare of my light right above. But yeah, this is how I started. Like, this was stuff that I was super, super interested in. Um, but as you can kind of tell, it's it starts off... It starts off um, pretty basic, you know? <laughs> and then all of a sudden you're over here drawing these fully developed characters and like I couldn't even draw this yet and so it was way 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 above my skill level but it was just super inspiring if you look at this one over here yeah like this all of this type of stuff I never knew these came like this type of style was from shows I just thought that they were artworks that were standalone and I was really interested in being able to create this kind of stuff myself. And so you may be asking, okay, Josh, you got these books here, so let's see the art. And so for this type of stuff, I only have um, one picture of a scan I made five years ago of my first attempts at this kind of stuff. So I'm gonna show that to you here, hopefully. Um, right now, hopefully I'll be able to show that to you here. You'll be able to look at it. Um, they are very, very basic and super, like rudimentary i had no understanding of form or anything like that and i kept making the same mistakes um you can see the one down at the bottom left hand corner is my first kind of foray into um drawing from life that was a girl on the bus i was drawing and it was absolutely terrible <laughs> i showed it to her and she was very much not impressed with my work um but what i used to get um, even more serious were my lifelike how to draw people books and the first book I actually used I'll try to show it right here is a book by Brenda Hodnot that I used to draw people and so I got a lot of graphite pencils and I would draw everything from these two books and I would try to use the shading techniques that they taught in those books to help me understand how to um, represent things in 3d even though I didn't really understand what it meant to show something in 3D, I was really, really attracted to the idea of shading and blending. And I got pretty good at it. Um, and this right here was how I used to draw everything that I'm about to show you um, in the next kind of phase of my artistic journey. So this is kind of the biggest phase of my art journey. And this was where I would do a lot of graphite pencil portraits. And so these were some of my first ones that I did in 2008. Um, and uh, if I can get this to show properly without the graphite refracting too much light, I mean, uh, reflecting too much light. Um, but you can see here, I use the grid in this one, but not in this one. Now, when I flip around, you will see kind of how I improved really quickly. Um, because I was just drawing these all the time in school, at home, whenever I had a chance. And you can see this is the Yutada Hikaru portrait I did um, so many years ago that I redid um, recently. And then this is just a clipping from a magazine. This is Jennifer Aniston. I did this in 2009. 
Um, and then when I turn it around, you will see that this is Tom Cruise. And I also did this one in 2009. You can see I got one of those um, graphite pencils that was really um, just a solid chunk of graphite with no wood. And I would use that to kind of fill in these backgrounds that I thought looked good at the time. But you can see it's pretty atrocious how, how much white is left and just how reflective everything is super annoying. It's just like, uh, it's, it's really hard to capture these um, without just getting a proper scan. So moving on, this is a this is a portrait of Halle Berry that I did. I'm trying to show you the best angle right here. And then this one is Gordon Ramsay. <laughs> and you can see I was watching Hell's Kitchen at the time and you can see I had a little bit of fun here, a little bit of inspiration from his uh, hit show. And these were some skull studies that I did. Um, I did these at school and sometimes at home. One of these, I can't remember, I actually did my first year in high school. And I would just sit at lunch at a lunch table by myself. <laughs> and I was just drawing these skulls and looking back, it's like, that could have looked very bad if anyone saw what I was doing. So good. it's a good thing I didn't really keep that up too long. I found some friends to sit with at some point. I'm skipping around in order a little bit here, but this is a drawing I did of Don Cheadle. Um, this one shows up a lot better because what I did was I mixed, um, what is it, charcoal in the background and mixed graphite with the foreground. So this one came through pretty nice um, as a composition. This is from, I think, his film Hotel Rwanda. And then on the other side, you can see I drew Arnold Schwarzenegger. <laughs> so this is Arnold and I, I just had fun trying to put in a little bit of the Terminator eye here. Um, I really wish the glare wasn't so bad. I could show you, <laughs> I could show you a little bit more of the details. Um, I think this is a good shot right here. But yeah, I had a lot of fun doing the hair here. And um, I think this is one of my more refined pieces. Here, this was in 2010. This is, uh, what's her name, Gen Gen Jessica Alba? Or I don't think it's Jennifer Alba, I think it's Jessica Alba. Yeah, you can see I used pretty big grids here. They were like about two inches apart. Um, yeah, <laughs> this is so bad trying to show you guys the, uh, without the picture without the glare, but I hope you guys can see a little bit of it, at least in detail. And then on the back side, oh wow. <laughs> okay, you guys can't really see it here, but my table is getting super dirty. <laughs> um, this is, I guess I'm just gonna show my signature now, it doesn't matter. Um, this is a baby that I drew. I just was like, oh, let's draw a baby. And yeah, I, I really like this one because I, even though I used the grid method, I found myself able to draw the basic shapes just doodling in class. I was able to kind of draw a baby face because I'd been spending so much time drawing this at home. And so this was my first time experiencing kind of what happens when you get a lot of drawing mileage in. Next, we have some more celebrities because I loved to draw celebrities back then. This is Angelina Jolie. This was a quick sketch for me back then, which is still a lot of effort. <laughs> um, and then on the back side, we have Ursher. And something I did here that I don't think I ever did again was I wrote how long it took me. So this was 12 hours and 20 minutes, um, 2009. Had a lot of fun with this one. This was the really annoying thing about traditional art back then. It's just so difficult to keep like, I don't know what happened, but you can see there's a line right here. I don't know why it happened, but it's like impossible to get rid of. I had to learn the lessons the hard way. Yeah, I think that's all I'm going to show you guys of my traditional like pencil portraits. So now I'm going to go into the phase where I did stuff for class and I took a little bit more of the more advanced art classes in my public school. Now, these art classes didn't teach me that much, but I was able to get a huge amount of exposure into different media. And um, I also entered some contests. You guys can't see this, but I can see it and it's stressing me out. I need to clean the table up a little bit more. So this was one of my first acrylic paintings, trying different acrylic styles. Um, I think this one came out the best, but yeah, it's pretty, it's, it's really not that great. <laughs> Especially this one I'm about to show you. 
this was like my art teacher was like it's okay josh you don't like to paint that's fine <laughs> i was just like i can't paint this was terrible like i could do much better drawings than this at this time but painting was just not my my strong point and yeah these were the paintings that i did and i really don't like painting in real life today so <laughs> yeah don't feel discouraged if you're still in school um and now we're getting into some of the stuff that i liked much more this is a watercolor and ink piece that i did but yeah this is just something abstract that i did um and then i found this guy online that i decided to draw in there um this is when i started to draw a lot more stuff that was related to kind of like expressing myself my emotions what i saw in the world so i guess you could say this is kind of how i was feeling at that point like super complex and like nobody gets me or whatever um <laughs> this was me in high school um so yeah you're gonna see all that come through this was something that we were learning chiroscuro i think that's how you say it so this is a portrait i did i think you can still find the reference for this picture online if you look hard enough i really liked what i did here with um how i represented one of her um i don't know if it's her bra or shirt strap but um yeah I, this is one of my favorite pieces that i did it's it's really strong even though for 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 the skill level i was at it was a very very strong piece now i did say i didn't like painting but one thing that i did like was watercolor um i was very very inspired and enamored by a wonderful artist her name is agnes cecil i'm sure you guys know her she's pretty popular on youtube and on instagram as well um this is a portrait of one of my friends and i used some of her pictures to kind of get inspiration for this painting and i just did a lot of random you can see i was inspired by a lot of this geometric complexity um i was fighting with the idea that i wasn't really creative i felt a lot more technical than creative back then what else do we got here before i get into my uh my prized collection this was a portrait that i did of leona lewis um she was the singer for a lot of the music in final fantasy and avatar the not the airbender but the the blue people <laughs> um i was i really liked her music so I, I drew a portrait of her um in school you can see i had a very difficult time with the hair did not like hair still hair is still very difficult for me this is one of the pieces that was i was really really proud of and kind of helped me get into a lot of um higher places and get into a lot of competitions and stuff um this was one of my friends that i met at a special kind of art kind of camp thing i went to in 2012 and she let me use some of her pictures and i was just I just drew this and this is kind of how I felt about myself at this time. I thought I was somebody going through a lot of tough things and I believed that I was getting stronger through it. And uh, this is kind of what this conveys. This is her progression as a person. Um, as I told them to very many people when I had to tell them what my art was about. Um, I think this one is called Sugar and Spice. This was another portrait that got me um some awards i think this one was for a contest called beauty is the contest was called reflections but the topic was beauty is and i was just like let's put a let's put a rose on a girl's face and it's art you know <laughs> you know and it's you know it's it's good i i really looking back on this piece it's just it's just amazing to to see how dedicated i was at all of these different stages regardless of what my art skill was at the time this is another one of my friends that i met at that camp that i was like hey i'm gonna paint everyone from this camp and, and use them for my artwork and so uh yeah i kind of did this overlay i was kind of good with photoshop and so i would make these things in photoshop and then draw them um and then use that as my art this was another piece I was really inspired, that was I was really proud of. Um, this piece was something that I made. I was very inspired by... This is when I started listening to mainstream music. I really didn't listen to a lot of music with words in it until um, later in high school. And one of my favorite bands at the time was um, uh, Young the Giant. And one of their covers for their album Apartment inspired me to make this art. And if you look at the album cover, you'll see this kind of 
um, geometric, colorful artwork. And I use that to inspire this pen in a watercolor painting that I did. This was another portrait that I made. This was straight copied from a guy on, what's his, what is it called, Flickr? or some people taking photos, really great photos on Flickr, and um, I would just, you know, draw them. I think his name was Andres Poor. Um, I don't know if he's ever going to see this because he stopped being active, but I drew one of his uh, photos and I really, really liked grungy, um, uh, what is it called, urbex kind of photography. I was really into that and I loved having it for my artwork. And um, yeah, this one is called Still Here. Again, this is just, I was super into like tough, kind of depressing kind of stuff um, to inspire my artwork at the time. This was still in high school. I'm going to try. All right. You know what? I'm going to do it. This piece is way too big, but I did this because, I don't know, I was just looking like one of my things, it's super creepy to say right now, but like one of the things I would do for inspiration was I would go through my friends on Facebook. I would go through their photos and like see if they had some nice photos. But the thing was, I actually do think it was a good thing because when I found a photo, I would just be like, hey, can I draw this? And they would usually be like, oh yeah, great, Josh. You know, Josh, the guy who draws so well that everyone knows in high school, of course, they'll, I'll let him draw my stuff. And so, yeah, it was kind of creepy that I was looking through everyone's Facebook pictures at the time, but hey, I was getting permission at least to draw them. So, but I knew this girl and she this was her friend and um, I kind of made this kind of collage. I'm really happy with the bottom section. I really like how um, I was able to use these materials. Like I had, I had never done watercolor like this and I think it turned out amazing. Um, I, yeah, I would, I would be interesting in, interested to try this out more. It's like, it's funny. I think I was pretty good in color traditionally, but digitally I'm just like, I just lost it. <laughs> And I think now I'm just going to get into the last pieces I did. Um, these are like my favorite, most prized pieces that I entered into that recent um, art show that I was in. Um, so I'm going to tell you a little bit more about these. So this one was another one of my high school friends that I asked. Um, there was all of these are basically done that I'm going to show you from this one forward. I would take photos of these my friends, bring them into the art class and then I would have them sit on a stool, which you might be able to make out here, but you'll see more in the later drawings. And I would take a photo of them and then I would collage them in Photoshop and then print it out and use that as a reference for my artwork. So this is a watercolor wash with um, watercolor and pen and ink on top of it. Um, and this is called Shake the Foundations, with it, which is an excerpt from Martin Luther King's speech, and this was done for a contest called the Dream at 50 here in Atlanta, where when Martin Luther King's birthday comes up, um, every or the speech, or yeah, his birthday comes up, um, there's a contest for all of these students to do artworks about his speech and take an excerpt from his speech and make an artwork about it, and mine won like the grand prize. They made it through everything else, and it was this was actually on a billboard in Atlanta at some point, so I'm super proud of this piece. Um, and yeah, I was I was really proud. I had come just come out of a kind of dark time with my art where I felt like I couldn't make anything good. <laughs> it was at that art camp I mentioned, but I felt like at that place, um, it was called GHP, and at that place I feel like I purged a lot of bad art out of me <laughs> in a way and got a lot made a lot of mistakes, which meant I made a lot of learning opportunities and I was able to make my most um, my greatest traditional pieces and so I hope that one day what I can do is either come back to these kind of styles traditionally or begin to bring the themes into my um, digital artwork so now we have the highly esteemed Judge but not tried series. So I took AP art in high school and so part of what you have to do is a concentration series. And so in this series, you pick a theme and you do 12 pieces of art on that theme. And so mine was called Judge but not tried. And in this theme, um, what I would do is I would take, I was focused on stereotypes and misconceptions and I would take what a stereotype I thought was and 
get someone I felt like that stereotype could be applied to and kind of take represent the stereotype with an image and cover their face. And so that kind of mirrors um, what that kind of mirrors how we would perceive people. So we would take the stereotype and then not be able to see who the person truly is, aka their face, and we would just see the stereotype covering their true identity. So that was the series, and I did 12 pieces on that. Um, this was, I just showed you the first one, and now this is the last one. And so you can see it's pretty, pretty big difference in the quality of the technique um, and the complexity. I have two people here, and then there's one person here. Um, but the idea with this is that I would take an uh, image, um, collage it with a lot of different images in Photoshop, print it, flip it over, make sure I print it mirrored, flip it over, make sure it's printed on a, <laughs> on a low quality printer, and then I would flip it over um, and then get acetone, cover it on the back, transfer the ink to the paper, and then it would come up really bad like this, and then I would use pen and ink to kind of refine it later on in the process, and then also draw an individual who I felt like the stereotype could be applied to using pen, pencil, and ink. And so these were all people that I knew and photographed myself, and I was very, very proud of this series, and it was uh, and still there are people out there who <laughs> want to buy these pieces, but I still need to photograph them. So, yeah, one one um, thing I also want to mention about these series is that um, as it progressed, I started running out of ideas. So this one, I have like no clue what it means. There's a girl pulling a hammer out of her book bag. Like, what is that? What is that? What does that mean? Why is there engine parts above her head? <laughs> I can't remember. But these were done um, in 2013, 2012. And so this one was about this one was about something that's actually very close to me now. It's about a guy, his passion is in music, and this guy actually loves to play guitar. And how the perception is, oh, you're gonna be poor, you're gonna be living terribly, and you're going to be um, threatening the lives of your offspring by chasing your dreams. And so that's what I kind of drew to cover his face instead of people seeing him for who he is and his potential. They just saw this um, prediction they had over him. I'm sure a lot of you in the audience right now can identify with that. Um, here is another one. These are huge pieces, so I'm trying to maneuver them. Um, oh, wow, it fits. <laughs> so this one is about kind of the smart kid. Um, it's kind of hard to see without me telling you, but this is about the kid sitting down, reading a book, he's smart, you know, gaining all this intelligence, but people will just look at him like he's boring and that there's no, like nothing out there for him. Just like, you know, how this was just the assumption that the smart kid is just somebody that wouldn't be entertaining, not fun to hang out, so hang, hang out with, so they would just leave him alone. And yeah, that's that stereotype. This one is one much easier, and I think I did a much better job of conveying. This is um, one based on race and culture, and so this was one of my Asian friends at the time, and I just took some a picture of some people in rice fields and collaged it with some other people, and. Um, I put all these Asian texts over it, and then I didn't even know that this one isn't even Asian, that's Arabic. And I took all these random different culture, cultural languages. I know this is Japanese, but then there's probably Chinese in here as well. Um, but yeah, I was just trying to say, oh, they would see his culture, his history, instead of seeing him for who he is. You know, pretty basic. I think you guys get the picture, but I still want to show you one more. This one is called League of Royalty. And so with this one, um, this one was based off of a story that my physics teacher told me that back when he was in school, he said that there was a girl that was so beautiful once in class. And when it was coming up to prom, he, he realized that she didn't have a date to prom. And he was like, what? How does she not have a date to prom? And it was because everyone was so enamored by her that nobody asked her out. They were too scared to... And so I, I really liked that story, and so I did an art piece based off of it. And so this one is that this girl is just so beautiful, and that she's seen as just unattainable by every person at the school. So 
she, everyone sees just like this royal castle that no one could ever, you know, dream of getting into. Um, but instead of seeing her for who she is as a person that would also probably love to go to prom, no, they just see somebody that's separate from them, royalty, somebody that's untouchable. So yeah, that's the message for this piece. Whoa. Guys, this place is a complete mess. I wish you could see the background. I actually don't wish you could see it, but I'm glad all you can see is this white table. So yeah, we're finally done guys. Jeez, that was a lot of art. <laughs> Thank you guys so much for watching. If you're wondering what these sketchbooks are here for, it's because I'm going to do a sketchbook tour quote unquote in my next video. So subscribe if you want to see that. There's going to be some special advice for you guys in that video. And I will see you in the next one. Peace. Stitch says goodbye.